Welcome to Baby Boomer Tales. My name's Jim. You can find us at babyboomertales.com. Once you've arrived at our webpage, you can link to our Facebook page, to different places you can listen to our podcast, to our Twitter account, or it's called X now. You can visit our Boomers General Store where you can buy all things Baby Boomers, including our famous Baby Boomer Tales coffee mug. There's great pictures there of the country I speak so much about in North Central Colorado Rocky Mountains, and also pictures of the area here where I live now. I want to talk about information a little bit. We are basically in the information age with the internet and all that stuff. When I was a kid, my information in that little hometown I lived in up in the north central Colorado Rocky Mountains, like I've said, little town of 500 people, well, the gossip mill was a main source of information. The ladies on the telephone, the men down at the coffee shop talking about what so-and-so pulled or who ran off with who or all that stuff. Also, though, we had television. I remember television from quite a young age. They were small little black and white jobs, and then they got to be larger, and then we got color TV, and TV was an important part, and we'd watch the news with Walter Cronkite and Huntley and Brinkley and those guys, and they gave us a lot of information. I remember when Kennedy was assassinated, us just being glued to the TV, it was our source for the information about our president dying and what was going on with all that. The ages and the arrows of man. The Stone Age went up to about 5,000 years ago. Then the Bronze Age came and it lasted until about 1200 BC. The Iron Age started and it lasted to about 500 BC. Then the classical era for a thousand years lasted until 500 AD and it kind of ended with the fall of Rome. Then we had the medieval era up to about 1500. This included the Renaissance and the Reformation. The Renaissance was the age of enlightening. The Reformation was the changes the church went through. And then we entered the early modern era from 1500 to about 1800. A lot of discovery happened then, like Americas and all that. And then from 1800 until now, we're in the modern era. Inside the modern era, we've gone through the agricultural age, where we learned how to feed vast amounts of people. The industrial revolution, where the automobile, the cotton gin, all these wonderful tools to help man were invented. And about 1950, we started to enter the information age. That's pretty much with the discovery of television. Radio was still an important factor back then. And now we're entering the age of experience. I think this could be a dangerous age. We're all getting so we're so touchy-feely and go by our emotions and our experiences like these weird goggles you put on and it puts you into a different reality. It's just one example, but that's a pretty good example, I feel. So man has discovered and developed so much stuff that now we must just all experience it. And experience is wonderful. You know, that's why you go on vacations. But to have an age of just experience kind of throws us back to maybe possibly the age of the Renaissance, only in a new spin on things. There's nothing new under the sun. You've got to remember that. Some of the stuff about the information age I want to cover with the telephone, which we had since Alexander Graham Bell, But by the time I came around, we had party lines. Remember those? Several of our neighbors and us would share one phone line. I thought it was great to listen in when I was a kid on the neighbors. We had cars, and that's the way we went to see Grandma. Back to the telephone. 
on the party line once we started getting on line then all of a sudden the phone changed a little bit and there was the princess phone our TVs changed and they're still changing today but when I was about 15 years old I think we got a color TV that'd be 1965 possibly 64 sometime in there but we still had an antenna pointed towards Denver and we could get three or four channels the cable came along and then later smart TVs came and now we stream over the internet all of our TV radio has changed a lot and I think it's of no importance, but is it? But back when H.G. Wells did the War of the Worlds, talk about information, he fed us some bad information and it almost caused panic. And he was just doing a goof on a radio play. There are phones other than landlines anymore. Phones got very, very small, these cell phones. Then they got very, very big. But my phone, I like to have it so I can put it in my pocket. I don't want it too big. If I want to see a big screen, I'll look at a computer or a TV. But some people like the bigger screens. So that's fine. Information. Do you remember when Sputnik was launched? There's a song back in the probably the mid-60s, maybe 62, 63, called Telstar. It was about a satellite out there. Now the heavens are full of satellites revolving around the earth or at least in orbit with the earth computers have changed from these monstrosities that ibm developed to well my wife has an apple watch all that is is a computer one thing i like about the information age is google it definitely replaced the dewey decimal system Replace the encyclopedias now if you don't like google that's fine there's duck duck go used to be all kinds of search engines. I'm sure there still are. We still have books, but we barely have newspapers. Radio has, in large part, been replaced with podcasts. We still have movies, but I don't think the multiplex theater that replaced the little hometown theater is doing all that well anymore. We just kind of hang out at home, and we can watch any movie we want. All we have to do is pay for it, just like going to the show. Popcorn? Coke? Yeah, you can get that popcorn you throw in the microwave for a minute and you got popcorn. Some of that won't replace the experience. Oh yeah, we're entering the age of experience. We know where everyone is all the time. My family, we have that app 360. So when my wife's gone, I can see where she's at. Oh no, she's at Walmart. Oh no, she's at Home Depot. Oh no, she's at Sometimes it drives me crazy following her on her adventures. I expect to see a car full of stuff she bought and she, and she comes home with one little bag of green salsa and tortillas as she got at Walmart. But some of these phone apps, you can have an app to tell you what star is what, what constellation is what. Don't think that privacy is an important thing anymore because your phone knows where you're at, Siri knows where you're at, Golly, I had a dog that had a computer chip in him in case he got lost. Now, I didn't put that in there. He came with it, you know. But they don't need to do that to us because we carry all this stuff with us that between our car, our phone, our watch, our hearing aids, that all know where you are. My hearing aids are great things. They know how many steps I take during the day, how long I'm standing, how long I'm sitting. Besides doing all this stuff for my hearing and in my phone, listen to music, listen to books, all that in my hearing aids. The industrial age, the information age has brought along drones. I think that's how we'll be fighting wars from now on, pretty much, or drones. But you can go on Amazon or go to Walmart or go to probably a sporting goods store and buy yourself a drone. You can put a camera on it. You can fly around my property. I could check out my property right from my office by my drone if I wanted. AI is getting more and more important. And I think that is going to help ease us into this age of experience because we won't have to do anything between robots and computers. AI is just going to run everything, probably run us right off the face of the earth. I don't know. I think it's possible. Social media is changing all the time, 
And there are very, very good things with social media, but there's a very dark side to it also. We also have influencers that tell us what to buy and how to do things, and we follow them. Well, I don't follow them. But my wife's always talking about these influencers that she follows that tell her how to paint something or how to make this out of that and all that stuff. Our cars, like I said, they're computers. That's all they are. Maybe that's why they want us to all drive electric cars. Because I don't think you can totally computerize an internal combustion engine. There's parts of it you can, though. The first transistor was invented in 1946, and they started all this information age, really. And it was designed by Bell Labs. But we have podcasts and videos, or they like to call podcasts with videos anymore, podcasts. And they're not, I like to call them video logs or vlogs or something. A true podcast, in my opinion, is not a video. Now, I've done some videos, and I call it Baby Boomer Video Tales. You can find those basically on our YouTube channel. I don't do many of them because out here in the country, my internet's not as fast as if I was in a more densely populated place. There is a downside to this information age. Number one, I can't remember anybody's phone numbers. Barely remember mine and my wife's. Basically, you know, everything, you just, on your phone, you don't need to dial anybody or anything. Texting is preferred to talking. Rather text somebody than talk to them. The internet is addictive. There's been studies that show your brain when you get on social media and the internet and all that stuff, that your brain reacts kind of how it does on drugs or alcohol. Amazing. Mankind has turned ruder than we used to be. Like I said, our privacy is disappearing or it's not even a thing anymore, really. I know some older people, you hear them talk about trying to get their privacy and stuff like that, but really? Is that even a thing? Sad state of affairs, I know. But the advantages of the information age, we can stay in touch with people in our past. I think that's a wonderful thing. I really do. If they had it when... I first left home and all that, maybe I'd still be in touch with some of those friends of mine. I don't know. Another advantage is we do not need the Dewey Decimal System. I spoke of that earlier today. That thing used to drive me crazy. And I took a class on library science. We can FaceTime the grandkids, do that with every one of them on their birthday, so we can see them. The video telephone. Learning is different because we don't have to dig for information. That's sad. It really is. Banking's better. I don't go to the bank hardly ever. If I go to the bank, it's for some reason I got some cash. I won't need to deposit it somewhere in one of my accounts. Closest I seem to get to the bank is I'll go through their drive through ATM. So I can see the people working in, you know, because the ATM is situated by the drive throughs But I don't really go to the bank. I used to know all the people in the bank. No more. GPS, though. Talk about the information age and a plus. I have to say maybe the very best thing I am aware of at this moment is GPS. You don't have to be some kind of navigator to read a map to know where you're going. They'll just tell you as you drive it along. But the information age has isolated so many of us. Now I speak of my getting isolated more and more with my hearing situation, but I think that the information age has done a number on us as far as isolating us. Mankind will work through it and then we'll be on to something else, just experiencing all that as we live in la-la land. Guard your heart, guard your soul. Well, that'll about do it for me this week. Thank you for riding along. I just had to talk about the information age just a little. It's a big part of all of our lives because we live in it. Always be kind everywhere you go, around everyone you come in contact with. You'll be glad you were. I'll be back next Wednesday. Peace out.